Today, we've got headers and manifolds. We're going to talk about the differences, what is an advantage of a manifold, what is an advantage of a header, and when we use headers, when we use manifolds, and why. So we'll start off with a manifold. This is an LS7 manifold that was modified to work on a turbo car, my turbo car. Uh, this little squid looking deal here is for anti-lag, so we're going to ignore that for right now. Um, it's been, had the little collector added onto the bottom for a V-band. And what you'll notice is the manifold is a really, really tight package. A lot of times, the manifolds will be a, a cast piece. This is actually a bunch of stamped stainless parts and it's double wall. Um, it still does have a flange. It's got individual runners inside. And if you look inside the end, you can see that there's individual runners inside. Those are welded to a big housing out of two stamp pieces and these are weld beads that hold it all together. Now the big advantage of manifolds is on any car, packaging exhaust can be really tricky. Exhaust gets really hot, placing it next to components that can be damaged by heat is dangerous. So if you look in here, a lot of this is clearance to get to spark plugs and you know easy access to the bolts, things like that. But the downside is the shape of the manifold isn't necessarily meant to be ideal for performance and the length of the runners on one like this aren't necessarily tuned for the performance that we're going for. So we can also get some weird stuff with the cross-sectional volume of each of the individual runners going into the collector, things like that. Um, what we have found is a potential flaw with this particular manifold is the way this collector works, where we are trying to get it really short, we're feeling like we're getting a restriction here, and you can kind of see with this curve that that's certainly plausible. The other thing that we're having kind of an issue with is if you look at the top runner, the short side radius is really short. So for packaging, that makes it work really well. But for flow, it doesn't work quite as well. The other thing, if you kind of look in here, you'll notice that they're all different shapes. So you're gonna get different flow characteristics out of all of these different shapes, where you're going from this D shape into a rectangle, or some of them that have a D that rotates and changes shape. You know, all of that isn't really going to allow the flow to be as consistent. It's gonna make spots where we're gonna get pressure differentials inside the tube and some restriction. And that restriction can kind of lead to heat in different areas of the manifold. So we were running into a lot of problems with high EGTs. So we've decided to go to a better flowing system to try to make sure we get that heat downstream. We've actually talked to our engine builder, Al at CMP. They did some math and figured out an ideal primary tube length for the engine. Now, when you get into that and you figure out what your ideal primary tube length is for your engine, usually those numbers are going to be much larger than what this is. This is probably maybe eight inches of primary length before it goes into the collector. Ideal for our engine is 25 inches. So you can see it's a third the length of what we really need and also the volume goes from larger to smaller as it, as it goes into the stamping, which is kind of restricting it a little bit, which it also is gonna increase the back pressure and it's gonna increase the temperature. So if you're doing a turbo setup, that temperature is gonna cause issues for you. If you're doing NA, that back pressure will cause a lot of problems because any engine likes to work with pressure differential across the intake to the exhaust. If you have more pressure on the intake than you do on the exhaust, you make more power. It's kind of like getting boost on an engine. So one thing that a lot of people do to get that pressure differential with a header is really tune the size of the primary tubes. And some of them you'll even see where they step them so that they get larger. You can kind of see a step in this header here. And where you put those steps can 
lead to a little bit of an expansion at that area which can help try and draw air through which you're trying to kind of keep that pressure as low as possible increase that pressure differential across the cylinder pick up a little bit of power but you can also see how much larger just even in this normal header the primary tube bends on and that allows for a lot better flow coming right out of the cylinder head you're going to have a lot less uh, pressure build up on the back side here trying to go through that tight turn than you would with a manifold so the big advantage of the header because you're going to make it out of individual tubes you're going to be able to have a lot more flexibility in the size of the tube that you use you're going to have flexibility in do you have steps in it where are those steps located are they equal length unequal length how long are the primaries like you're not going to have a cast manifold of primaries anywhere near this long well that primary tube length can be tuned for your specific engine this however is a lot harder to package it's going to put heat on a lot more components in your engine compartment you got to consider that but if it's strictly performance using a header almost always the way to go because it allows you to maximize the flow and maximize the scavenging of the cylinders in an engine or in the turbo engines as we're discovering more and more it's not always just about decreasing the volume of the manifold to help with spool a lot of times it's making the engine happy off of boost so that it's more likely to build boost and get into boost earlier because you got higher flows because the engine's happier making more power even on a boost so it's like anything else in custom cars and performance cars it's a lot of a balancing act if you've got a package that you just can't fit a header you know a manifold's the way to go if you're looking for a manifold you really want to look at one that's going to have the volume that you need and it's going to have as good a flow as possible as wide a radius as possible uh, if you can find one with longer primary tubes most of the time that's going to help if it'll fit your package if ultimate performance is the goal you're almost always going to need to go with a header and that's just because you're going to be able to tune that to your engine and make everything work optimally what i do man i was going to throw down bro my bad all right so patty was singing and that was our one take Tech Tip Tuesday.